Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, December 23rd, Christmas Eve Eve 2020, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time. The models are in, and there is a current ongoing blizzard in the upper Midwest, which will be followed by a second blizzard through the mid Craton. And this all happens before the new year. The big story, yes, Christmas blizzard pummels Minnesota, closing roads, stranding drivers. I-94 closed in both directions due to multi-vehicle pileup near Albertaville. No travel advised in Duluth. Keep calm. It's boom time. A Christmas blizzard upended holiday travel across Minnesota on Wednesday. Say it ain't soda. Delaying flights, closing roads across most of the state, and stranding motorists. Central and southern Minnesota were under blizzard warnings Wednesday with 70 mile per hour plus winds causing conditions to deteriorate quickly. 7 to 11 inches of snow were expected in central Minnesota where temperatures were expected to plummet overnight. Minneapolis St. Paul declared snow emergencies. Nearly 300 flights at Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport canceled with dozens delayed. Metro Transit reported numerous bus delays. Poor visibility, slick roads contributed to driving havoc from a multi-vehicle pileup to close Interstate 94 near Albertaville and Monticello. The hundreds of crashes with dozens of injuries statewide. Whiteout conditions close Interstate 90 between South Dakota border just east of Blue Earth. A slew of crashes in the Duluth area, including a multi-vehicle mess on I-535, prompted officials there to plead with the public to stay off the roads. And that they will plead. Stay off the roads, especially in Duluth, where the current temperature is just 6 degrees. Duluth and National Weather Service issues a no-travel advisory. Blizzard and winter storm warnings are posted for most of Minnesota and northern Wisconsin, where you can't see sh And that's the official word. Winter weather, blizzard conditions expected in portions of Iowa as well, with winds reaching 50. And we'll get to those models. But more news. Florida could get the coldest Christmas Eve in 20 freaking years. Falling iguanas are possible in the region. It's true. Tis the season for falling iguanas in South Florida. The meat is delicious, and you can sell it on eBay. Now let's check some of the footage from Global News. I love living in the mountains. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Probably get demonetized for that. Minnesota, say it ain't soda. Holy macaroni. Time to that bully. Oh dear. That is looking like some global warming goodness. Fantastic. Grand Forks Holy macaroni Kiss my ass, Nebraska. That is looking chilly. Oh. Amazing footage coming from Global News of some of the blizzard conditions across the U.S. today. Now, we are experiencing the coldest day since last year. And, well, no fear. Snowfall analysis from the last 48 hours shows heavy snow in southern Appalachians, 
They've been lacking that and snow throughout the West. But as the blizzard moves through, uh, there will be more snow. And let's check out the models. So there's that blizzard setting up in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Before it reaches the east, Christmas Day. So let's just move it through for you here. Here's your December 23rd. Here's your Christmas Eve. That heavy snow is going to be, and that blizzard is going to continue through tomorrow, unfortunately. And we're looking for it to produce some extreme lake effect snows starting Christmas night. And that will be in the areas of Pennsylvania. Let's just take you through that Christmas night right here. Heavy snows coming off of Lake Erie in Ontario and just beginning to develop in uh, northern New York. And we have a really heavy snow event for all of West Virginia. So West Virginia gets the winner, winner, chicken dinner for a white Christmas. The entire state is going to be completely covered in the global warming goodness. West Virginia, you're the winner. Take a look at that. Haven't seen that in a while in West Virginia. They're going to be quite happy there. Now, that's not the end. Here's the 26th, the 27th through the holiday weekend. And take a look at the system setting up in the West. It's going to be heavy snow all the way down through the Sierras, all throughout the West Coast and the entire Rocky Mountain front. We're going to get the biggest totals down here in the Southern San Juans. And then that system blows up in Nebraska and Iowa. Heads up, Iowa. The entire state of Iowa under a foot of snow before New Year's or New Year's Eve. It's absolutely insane. And then more heavy snow moving into the Northeast right before New Year's Eve. It's a good thing you won't be out there in uh, Times Square because it's going to be chilly. We're going to see some frigid temperatures. And by the first week of January, it's looking like sudden strat stratospheric warming up in the North Pole here is going to bring epic cold temps into the Craton and push that all the way down into the lower 48. We're we'll keep a close watch on that because it's going to get cold in America. Powerful storm to impact central and eastern U.S. Hello. I should have turned this on earlier. It is frigid out here. When I started the show, it was 5 degrees at 9.30 p.m. We have a long way to go until sunrise. So I'm expecting minus 10 by the morning, and we'll throw up water and do all that fun stuff. A major storm system will bring lingering snowfall, bitterly cold temperatures, and gusty winds to the Midwest on Thursday. Meanwhile, over to the east, Areas of heavy rainfall will cause insane flooding in those four-foot regions in New York. Take a look. It's going to be an epic Christmas, trust me. Many basements are going to be filled and things will be destroyed. And it's, well, proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance. Indeed. Now, this flooding events in some areas before the precipitation turns to snow on Christmas Day. So, it'll be a Christmas Eve flood, Christmas Day, white Christmas. Hello. Severe thunderstorms also possible over the Southeast Virginia and the Carolinas on Christmas Eve. Ho, ho, ho. Sea ice thickness, well, it has exceeded some previous years in thickness, but what we want to bring your, draw your attention to is the extent. All the way from the western tip of Alaska to as far east as you can get across the Arctic. Uh, the extent is the highest it's been in five years and growing. So there's that. Seismic update. No quakes of note, which is good news. We have some blot echoes in Argentina, which we need to keep a close eye on. And this baby just popping off in Tonga, which is up at the surface, not a blot echo. So nothing severe as far as seismicity. But we do have the most in-depth analysis of the ongoing eruption at Kilauea. This is the third day of continuous eruption and we're going to cover it like no one else because Big Island Video News covers it like no one else. So take a look at the update and soak it in as the lava pours down like Christmas lights on Christmas Eve. Scientists report no significant change as the new eruption at the summit of Kilauea volcano enters its third day. The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has been capturing video of the eruption from its unique vantage point.
HVO issued an update on Wednesday morning. Of the three lava vents that erupted Sunday evening, two remain active this morning. This newly published map from the U.S. Geological Survey helps to illustrate. The west vent, which is located on the lowest down drop block within the crater, is feeding two narrow lava channels into the lake. The north vent remains the most vigorous. There have been dramatic changes within the summit caldera over the last decade, which are notated on the map. Previous to the new eruption, from July 2019 to December 2020, the crater was occupied by a water lake which slowly formed following the 2018 caldera collapse. The map also shows the size and location of the previous lava lake, which erupted continually from 2008 to 2018. As the map shows, the current lava lake is larger than both previous lakes. As of Tuesday afternoon, the lake's surface was 470 feet deep, with an approximate volume of 12 million cubic meters, that's equal to 2.7 billion gallons. So I want to just bring you back to this picture so we can all get a grasp on how much lava is filling uh, this caldera. In fact, it has eclipsed by hundreds of feet in depth the previous lava lake that remained for a decade prior to, to the 2018 eruption. So this lava lake is insane in stature, in acreage. It's grown to 55 acres, doubling in acreage since yesterday. It was about 32 and the depth has increased 75 feet. So this baby is quickly rising to the surface and may spill over the edge. This is an epic amount of lava filling into this hole. As inflation tiltimeters on the surface here are showing a deflation, which is good news. That's because the lava is pumping out. There is a lot of lava underneath of this baby, and this is certainly not over. cubic meters. That's equal to 2.7 billion gallons. The surface area was about 54 acres. Measurements indicate that the lake rose 75 feet in just over 24 hours. There is also a floating island of cooler solidified lava within the lava lake. As the lake rises, the island has also been rising and drifting eastward. Scientists say the island appears to be about nearly 500 feet in diameter and is getting smaller. It is likely made of material produced early in the eruption that accumulated at the base of the crater. HVO says summit tilt meters continue to record steady deflationary tilt. Sulfur dioxide emission rates remain high and are around 30,000 tons per day. Seismicity remained elevated but stable, with a few minor earthquakes and tremor fluctuations related to the vigor of the Fisher Fountaining. Due to the elevated gas emissions, Vogue has returned to Hawaii Island, especially over West Hawaii. The sulfur dioxide in particular may cause problems with respiratory health in sensitive individuals. The VOG Measurement and Prediction Project, a partnership between state and federal agencies, provides real-time VOG forecasts for the island. Models show there could be some hazardous air quality for ocean view in the days ahead. The last time areas of Kona and Ka'u were hit with heavy VOG was during the 2018 eruption. These images show what conditions looked like in Kona at the time. Unhealthy levels of gas are also registering on monitors inside the National Park. Real-time information on air quality found on the National Park Services Network show spikes were measured today at the Steam Vents and Kilauea Visitor Center. This new webcam view from Mauna Loa Strip Road, looking at the Kilauea Summit, appears to be washed out by a Vagi haze. In the event of Vagi conditions, health officials advise the following precautionary measures. Reduce outdoor activities that cause heavy breathing. Avoiding outdoor activity and exercise during VOG conditions can reduce exposure and minimize health risks. This is especially important for sensitive groups such as children, the elderly, and individuals with pre-existing respiratory conditions. Stay indoors and close windows and doors. If an air conditioner is used either in a home or a vehicle, set it to recirculate. The health department says you should always keep medications on hand and readily available. Daily prescribed medications should be taken on schedule and may provide protection from the effects of sulfur dioxide. Health officials say face coverings and masks used to prevent the spread of COVID-19 do not provide protection from sulfur dioxide or VOG, and remember to drink plenty of fluids to avoid dehydration. Meanwhile, as crowds flock to see the new eruption, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park has had to make some adjustments. On Tuesday, park officials announced the closure of the backcountry for overnight use. The spike in visitation requires the full attention of staff to manage safe access to viewing areas at the summit. All existing backcountry permits are canceled and rain checks will be issued. The park will reopen overnight backcountry use once additional National Park Service staff are brought in to help manage the evolving eruption. Given the depth of the crater, visitors will not be able to see the lava from the designated viewing areas, but the plume and nighttime glow are visible from all over the park. National Park Service photos like this one of a rare moonbow 
taken by photographer Janice Wee, show that there are plenty of wonders to behold around the summit as well. HVO is maintaining visual surveillance of the summit and the East Rift Zone and says it will continue to issue daily updates and additional messages as needed. Amazing coverage. Give them a thumbs up over there. Subscribe uh, to Big Island Video News if you haven't, and stay alert. Just amazing stuff coming from uh, Kilauea. Now let's check out our sun. Goes X-ray flux showing, showing some high B flare activity. In fact, getting up to B7.3, in fact. And this is due to some activity coming around the limb here. Look at this massive sunspot complex relative to the last several years completely massive. We have this large sunspot followed by a small plage with some tiny sunspots, but they're actually mixing in here at uh, beta. So let's take a look at that. AR2795 to the left, AR2794 to the right. 2794 is at alpha, but let's check out 2795 at beta mag class. This is the highest probability for creating mixing and potential flaring because you see negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So there is an intermixing of polarities in there, which is which brings us the flaring. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on that. Here's the A1A 171 angstrom showing you that activity and the magnetic field lines coming away from those spots. And the A1A composite also showing it. This is quite active with six spots in the cluster small as they may be. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this particular spot and we'll just, we can probably, no, no, we're not going to give you any <laughs> views of that activity, but there is some B flaring coming off of AR2795. And, and where's Al when you need him? Holy macaroni. So what we're looking at is <laughs> blizzard conditions in three states in over 50 counties click on the counties to get your information you just come over to weather.gov and click on it and it gives you the latest forecasts here is the national weather service forecast for duluth where it's currently six degrees fahrenheit minus 14 c and that's warmer than we are here to right now and things are changing and merry christmas folks get your hole al Shut up. Yeah, we like, people like you commenting. But I couldn't be bothered. It's definitely a Merry Christmas at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Where proper prior planning has prevented piss poor performance as we move into the new paradigm, the new future. With the new tropical greenhouse that's about to be set in action providing enough food for 16 to 20 people where we're only providing for three currently. And that's a boom. You can do it too. One step at a time, one day at a time. Change your mindset. Learn to meditate. Step away. Shinrin Yoku. Check out our new channel. And be safe. We love you. Tis the season for pleasing. Relax. Regroup. We have entered a new age, and we want you to join us. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, and to each and every one of you that shares this on Fakebook, because we're banned until the end of January. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. Be proud. Be American. Be an earthling. Be compassionate. Share love. Share knowledge. Sharing is caring. And that, well, that's a boom. Be safe. Click on one of the boxes illuminating to gain more knowledge.